Now I want to discuss navigation rules, commonly referred to as rules of the road. And there's two sets, one for inland rules and another one for when you go past the line of demarcation for going to international rules. But for the inland rules we're covered today, generally referred to as the rules of the road. The course that you took did a real good job of, dis of explaining what actions to take when you find yourself, you recognize yourself in a certain situation. I want to concentrate on making sure you understand how you got in that situation and that you have the proper definition for that situation. So the rules of the road out there tend to be a little bit like the old Karate Kid with Mr. Miyagi. Karate yes, karate no, same, same. Karate a little bit, smash like great. Most of the boats running out where you're going are going to be rules of the road a little bit and it causes people to do the wrong thing having a little bit of knowledge. So we want to make sure first of all that the rules apply. There's kind of a hierarchy we have to go through. Uh, first of those is the type of vessels. The course talked about a vessel, what it is, the different types of vessels, a uh, fishing vessel, a uh, uh, sailing vessel, whatever. The whole purpose of that is to establish what we call the pecking order. It's a pecking order, a hierarchy, and maneuverability, and the most maneuverable boat goes to the bottom of the list. And as a power-driven vessel, we are at the bottom of the list, which means if there's something out there that does not operate the way you do, then you give way to it. They will not stand on. A sailboat will turn right in front of you. So for the rules to apply, we have to be one-on-one, -on -one, power driven vessel to power driven vessel. If there's several vessels out there, you have to handle them one by one until you get into a situation which we will cover at the end of the rules uh, to avoid a collision. So power driven vessel to power driven vessels. Then the vessels must meet a visual rule, and that is they must be vessels in sight of one another. Sounds kind of simple, but it's a two-part meaning. One, I can see the other vessel. Two, I can tell what the other vessel's doing. That's the whole reason for red, green, and white lights at night, so we can tell what the other vessel's doing. Exactly the same thing applies during the day. If I can see something out there, barely see it, but I can't tell what it's doing, we're probably operating under the rules of restricted visibility. Under restricted visibility, the course covers it. It covers the sounds you make, how slow you maneuver and everything. Um, but restricted visibility is usually going to be in fog, heavy rainstorms, heavy mist, something where you can't see what the other vessel is doing. Um, I'll just say if you get caught in fog or restricted visibility, it's a very uncomfortable situation. You've got to realize that you are in no imminent danger. You just basically have to find out where you are and get yourself back someplace safe. Watch comes off other than for navigation. You have no appointments. You're just going to get your back, yourself back someplace you recognize. I would highly recommend that we download Navionics. It is uh, the one you want to get is Boat USA, and uh, it covers all the major lakes uh, in the U.S. It covers uh, coastal waters out several miles, so it's a great thing to have. Uh, Boating USA, and we want to point out a couple things on there. So, once you download the application and the map, this is representative of what it will show in a in an area. We have water depths. We have known structures. I would not navigate from those known structures, but uh, it's also important to know that it is GPS stabilized. Stabilized GPS, I should say. It is tied in with a compass, so even at very slow speeds, it's going to have your current location, and you can rotate it to track up or course up, but it tells you where you are and very much where you're going. Some things to point out. We have water depths on here. Uh, if this is a lake, then we know what the planned water depth is according to the pool level. But if that lake goes down, water level goes down, or as I like to say, the bottom comes up, we've got to get the correct depths on here. So there's some corrections we want to make. I will also point out this little yellow line here. That is from starting a track on there. It can be very, very handy. We'll talk about a couple situations later on where leaving your breadcrumb tracks out there would be very handy. So first thing we have to do is get this to be correct information. So when it says 26 feet of water, this is actually 26 feet of water. You're going to go down and press the menu button on there. And when you go down, you're going to come to a thing called map options. Select your map options, 
and you will come up to several choices and you slide down and one you will find is a water level. This is set at zero. That means well, all those numbers are set at the pool level. If that lake is down several feet, like Travis down 30 feet, you darn sure want to correct this. You tap in here and put down minus 30 feet. Now all those numbers up here are going to be corrected to the correct water level and match your depth finder. Another thing to do in that same menu option, a little bit farther down, is remember we said that four to six feet of, of water depth is where we want to start worrying about our props. I have set the shallow water in the depth shading area to six feet. That means that everything on this chart that is, less, that is blue is less than six feet deep. So that can be very handy. Not only do we have the actual depth, but we also have warnings when we're getting in any area that is less than six feet deep. So, um, Navionics, a great thing to have in restricted visibility. Tells you where you are and where you're going. Navionics, a very dangerous thing to have in restricted visibility. Why do I say that? Because you will hear people out there in the fog racing around because they have some form of a GPS and they think they know where they're going and they're heading out. You still are under restricted visibility, slow movements, whistle signals, everything else. But this Navionics can be a great aid. Um, and the same thing applies not just in fog, but if you get yourself in heavy rain, if you stay out too late and get caught, we see it all the time, people racing in a thunderstorm because they're worrying about all the stuff falling. I will promise you that nothing that falls out of the sky is as likely to hurt you as badly as something you run into. So if you get caught in that heavy rain, you just stayed at the party a little too long, and you got to kind of crawl home, slow and safe. Okay, if we're not in restricted visibility, we are vessels inside of one another, then we have to do a visual observance. Is there a risk of collision? And we've already covered what is a risk of collision. Constant bearing, decreasing range. If we don't have that, no rules apply. We just observe the other vessel. Now, once we de determine that we do have a risk of collision, we got to identify the situation and determine if we are the giveway or the stand-on vessel. A giveway vessel will stop, slow down, turn, and go behind the other vessel. You will make big, early, substantial changes. Even if you are going to violate the rules, make big, early changes. The other vessel can tell what you're doing. If you are the stand-on vessel in a situation, it does not mean you have the right-of-way. There is no actual true right-of-way uh, in, in navigation rules. Stand-on vessel is expected to maintain its course and speed so the other vessels can maneuver around them. Uh, I'll just say that if you happen to get hit from behind, it may very well be your primary fault if you were the stand-on vessel in a certain situation. So it is very important that we start also, observing our starboard side. I can drive up against most boaters out there in the lake on their starboard side and they'll never know I'm there because boaters never look off to their starboard. There's no rear view mirror, there's no bar ditch down here to look out to, a lane to maintain, and all your entertainment and your people are off to your port side. So let's get in, get in the habit of looking off to our starboard side because you may be a stand-on vessel. Once we determine that, then it becomes easy, the course is covered. We only have three situations, three basic situations. Either an overtaking, meeting head-to-head, -head, or a crossing situation. I will cover